Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. What's cool? What's groovy? What's happening? Thank you so much for joining my channel today. So today's topic is going to be quite intense and very different from what I usually do. We're going to be talking about HIV AIDS and this is especially important today because today, the 1st of December, as is every year, it is World AIDS Day. It's a very important day. The 1st of December every year is World AIDS Day. You usually see people wearing like clips or some kind of badge or have a pen with that ribbon logo. Um, I used to have one. I don't quite know where I kept it. I usually wear it on this day every year. It's a day that people all around the world unite in the fight against HIV and remember those that sadly passed away due to AIDS related illnesses. An interesting fact is that World AIDS Day was started in 1988 and it was the first ever global health day. Now in the UK, there are currently about 100,000 people living with HIV and it is estimated that globally about 36.7 million people suffer from HIV. It is in fact one of the deadliest pandemics of all time and if we're talking about current pandemics, it is second on the list, coming second to malaria. And technology has come a long way in identifying the disease and help protect people against it, but also help those that are already affected by the disease and through medication and things like that. However, still every year, 6,000 people are diagnosed with HIV. Now there's a lot of stigma and a lot of discrimination around this topic, even though it's been around for a long time and people are speaking about it more openly these days. World AIDS Day is extremely important to raise awareness and make sure that people, the public and governments alike, realize that AIDS is still a current thing. It is affecting many, many people. Thousands, millions of lives are being affected by HIV AIDS and it is not something to be quiet about. It also helps raise funds it is a day that people come together, raise funds with various activities, either on a national scale or within communities. And it's just a day that people can show some solidarity. So HIV and AIDS, what is the difference? Actually, the two are two completely different diagnoses. They are often used interchangeably. HIV is the virus, whereas AIDS is the disease that actually results from that virus. Now, HIV actually stands for something. It stands for human immunodeficiency virus. HIV is a virus that only attacks humans and specifically attacks the immune system, making sure that this is not able to function as it normally would and making the person who contracts the virus more susceptible to other very severe illnesses, which then the immune system is not able to fight against. They all get viruses sometimes, the common cold, the flu, warts. Our immune system is usually able to get rid of those viruses and fight them off. And within a short time, we get better. However, with HIV, it's a virus that for some reason our immune system is unable to fight. Medications can control the virus very successfully. Now, AIDS is an illness, disease, or syndrome, if you like. And it is what happens once somebody contracts the virus HIV. Now, it stands for Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. It's a very complex and difficult condition and varies from person to person. No one person with, with AIDS will have the same kind of symptoms. It will affect people in different ways. Now, as this illness attacks the immune system, it can lead to people getting various infections, uh, pneumonia, tuberculosis, various types of cancers. Let's get this straight. HIV is the virus that can eventually lead to the condition referred to as AIDS. But there are people who are HIV infected, however, never acquire AIDS or do not for decades or a very long time. Somebody might not actually have AIDS, but still be infected with HIV and so still be able to pass that on. So how can HIV be transmitted from person to person? Through bodily fluids. With unprotected sex, obviously when bodily fluids are able to be exchanged, this is when this can be transferred. Infected needles. Now this can be with drug abuse. It can also be when getting a tattoo, because remember you guys, tattoos are also put on the body with needles, which is why you need to make sure that if you're getting a tattoo, you're going to a good place. Microblading, which is where um, 
people get their eyebrows kind of tattooed on looking amazing but it's also done with a needle-like um, device then a less common way blood transfusions and also obviously through childbirth now HIV will not always produce symptoms sometimes people go ages and ages without actually experiencing the symptoms uh, of HIV and um, that's because sometimes the immune system is able to control the virus quite well for a significant amount of time however once it does start to develop into AIDS people usually do experience uh, significant health issues there are many myths about the transferability of HIV number one that it can be transferred through swimming in the same pool eh. number two that it can be transferred by insects eh. number three that it can be transferred through sitting on the same toilet or using the same toilet as somebody with HIV eh. number four that it can be transferred by sweat tears or saliva that is also wrong it's a complete myth now if we're talking about things like kissing and open mouth kissing if somebody that's hiv infected has a wound and obviously kisses with somebody who does not that is one way that the virus can be transferred in the same way if two open wounds touch from somebody that has hiv and somebody that does not the virus can also be transferred in this manner so these are ways that it can be transferred. With all the others that I just mentioned, not. Let's get that straight. So how can HIV be diagnosed? So because it is a virus, your body will automatically form antibodies to try and beat the virus. Try and the virus. How HIV is diagnosed is by giving off a blood sample or saliva sample, and that's where they can detect whether your body has started making those antibodies. Interestingly enough though, these tests can only be done after a person has been uh, infected with the virus. It will be several weeks after the initial infection that your body actually starts to develop these antibodies. So it might be a while. How does one diagnose somebody with AIDS? Now, as we have discussed before, AIDS is like the progression of the virus HIV. So unlike HIV, it, there's different post processes to um, find out if somebody has AIDS. There are these cells that we have called CD4 cells, and these are also known as immune cells. I don't know if you remember your biology, but let me take you back. So there are some cells in the body called uh, leukocytes or macrophages. CD4 cells, it's an immune cell because it stimulates those cells. And those cells are very, the leukocytes and the macrophages are very important in helping the immune system fight off viruses right so every human being has a certain count of cd4 cells and um, somebody with hiv might have less cd4 cells and then when the disease let's say somebody starts off with hiv they have about 500 to 1200 cd4 cells and then um they do a test again and see that the cd4 cell count has dropped to about 100 200 okay that means that somebody has actually contracted AIDS now and means that the immune system is now going to be really, really unable to fight off any viruses. And that's when the person becomes susceptible to everything. And that's why they need to stay away from people with the cold and all these type of things, even the most minor infections, because they will catch it and their immune system will not be able to deal with it effectively. Another thing that can diagnose somebody with AIDS is the presence of what is called opportunistic infections. Now, these are diseases that are caused by things such as bacteria, viruses, fungi, that in a healthy person with no AIDS would not make them quite as sick. The medication that's out today can actually increase somebody's life expectancy with years or even decades before eventually developing AIDS. But once somebody is infected with HIV, the virus will eventually lead to the disease AIDS and it is extremely extremely important to know that somebody with HIV that has not developed into AIDS yet can still pass on this virus to other people. So this was a completely different thing on my channel. I usually am not this serious but I thought it would be good to shine a light and especially because it's just one day out of the year I decided to make this video 
and hopefully educate somebody out there who maybe did not know the difference between HIV and AIDS as it is used interchangeably. I know it is extremely confusing or they don't know how it can be transferred and stuff like that. But I hope this video has made it a bit more clear. Make time for life. It's time to start living it right. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.